My name is Jason Partica with the Belfield Tech Support, and we'll be going over our GA control today. We'll get started uh, talking about our, our GA control. So upon startup, so the, the unit will, um, when you go to plug the unit in, there's typically about a 30 second delay uh, before it before it comes into the home screen, and that's what you're seeing on on the screen right here. So the the you'll plug it in. It, it's this control is not unlike a cell phone, a tablet, a computer. It's going to take a, a little bit of time for it to to boot up, um, but after about 30 seconds or so, it'll it'll bring up the the home screen on here. Um, if it says system off, you can press the little on off icon there on the right hand side of the screen and that will will start the unit up into uh, a cooling cycle. Uh, one thing I did want to note on here uh, for, for the purpose of our conversation today we're going to be talking about the refrigeration and freezer application here. These are also available uh, as a heated cabinet um, so we're not really going to talk about that too much here. The, there's, there's really a lot more features to the to the freezer and cooler settings, so uh, or options, I should say. So we're just going to talk about that strictly here today. So upon startup, uh, normally what happens is it'll it'll flash the box temperature, usually for about uh, three minutes or so, and then it'll go into a defrost cycle. Uh, the refrigerators will have the evaporator fans running during defrost. The freezers will not. Uh, that initial defrost cycle on either unit could take up to about 35 minutes before uh, it completes. Uh, that defrost icon will show during the, the entirety of the defrost. And then for a, an additional 30 minutes after the defrost is over uh, and, and the unit begins into a cooling cycle, it will continue to show the defrost icon on the screen. After that 30 minutes is over, then the box temperature will be displayed. Uh, as far as the home screen itself, so um, typically it's going to show, it'll have the little Dell Field logo at the top, it'll show the box temperature or defrost, whatever, uh, whatever uh, is happening at that particular time. Um, there's a couple different icons, we'll talk about them a little bit later, that you might also see on the top corners of the screen. Uh, the internet status icon is typically on the top left, and then the active alert icon is on the top right. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about what those are here in a little bit. Um, but then at the bottom of the screen, you have the, the home uh, button, the icon for it on the bottom left, the configuration icon, which is that uh, the icon with the three lines with the three dots and then the settings icon is the one on the bottom right. You can swipe between the screens to get to either the configuration or settings screens or you can press them um, at the at the bottom uh, to, to go to the, the screen that you're looking for. Um, most of those screens will time out after 15 seconds. Uh, there has been a recent update to the uh, firmware that actually makes that that timeout uh, time 30 seconds on that. So I'm going to go ahead and make a note to to change that in the in the training. But uh, uh, but it's it's actually 30 seconds on that now. So um, so we want to make sure that we uh, that you're aware of that as well. The password for this screen. So this is something that you'll definitely want to write down. Um, this password will will get you into basically all of the password protected functions of of this screen. Uh, the password on that is 211276. So I'll, I'll leave this screen up for just a moment here so you can get a picture of it, write it down, whatever you're going to do there. But the the keyboard itself, it has um, a button on the, on the left, or, I'm sorry, the right hand side, the ABC123 button. You can toggle between um, the, the numbers and symbols, the uppercase letters, and also the lowercase letters on that. So normally for, for our purposes, the, the passwords are all numbers, so there won't be any need to, to put in any sort of um, any lettering or anything like that. So, um, 
So that's just something to to be aware of with those. Usually, when we have passwords, again, just just numbers are involved with those. Uh, as far as the different uh, password functions on that, so um, if you you put in the the correct password, it will allow you to change the box temperature, for instance. Um, all of the, the features that are protected by a password, they remain active until the display hasn't been touched for 10 seconds there, then it'll return to the home screen and then you'll have to, to go back into those functions and, and put in that password again. There isn't a, a lockout feature per se, um, but if you try putting in the password three different times and you put it in incorrectly all three times, it'll just kick you back to the home screen and then you'll have to go back in and, and try it again. So there isn't any any instance where you can put in the wrong password four or five times in a row or whatever it may be, and then it'll lock you out for say 30 minutes or an hour. There's, there's nothing like that on, on this screen. So the configuration screen, so that's gonna be the one with the, the three lines and the three dots in the middle there. So again, you can get to that by swiping or just pressing that icon. So these are some of the, the tiles that you would see under the, the configuration screen on there. So we have, this is a, a freezer uh, set up here uh, on this screen. Um, it shows the, the frame heater, alarm management, diagnostics, network connection, uh, setting box temperature, uh, the temperature units, and the defrost type. And we'll talk about all those, those different things here in a little bit. As far as the setting screen goes, so we have the, the interior light, the time and date setting, the password, language, there are a few different languages on this, on this screen, uh, the LCD brightness, manual defrost, firmware update, resetting factory settings, and unit standby. And again, you can get to the setting screen by either pressing the icon on the bottom right or by swiping the screen a couple of times and, and getting to it that way. Uh, as far as language settings go, so you can, you can get to the language screen uh, by going to the settings uh, icon, and then you can select the, the language that you're looking for there. In most cases, it's gonna be the English, um, we do run into to some where they set it to Spanish, um, and then the and then French is, is also an option on these as well. Um, you'll notice there's three tiles on the on the bottom. We have German, Portuguese, and Italian. Uh, we don't have the translations done for those yet, uh, so those are some tiles or some languages uh, that you would see uh, maybe in the future on here. But for the most part, um, we're, we're all dealing with English here. Um, if the language gets changed for whatever reason and you're, you're not up on your Spanish or French, um, the language button is always going to be the fourth button down on the left-hand side, regardless of the setting. So if you find that, that language button under the settings icon and you can press it and then you'll see English, um, and then you can, you can switch it to, to English. As far as temperature units, um, this one's pretty self-explanatory. It's either going to be Fahrenheit or Celsius. Um, Fahrenheit is the, the default setting uh, for these units. Uh, the defrost type, so we're going to talk about uh, the defrost and how that uh, uh, can be changed on these. So we have two different types of defrost. We have adaptive defrost and time of day defrost. The adaptive defrost is gonna be the default setting for both the refrigerators and the freezers. So adaptive defrost, what, what that is, is uh, essentially it's gonna go into defrost based off of compressor run time and evaporator coil temperature. Uh, again, it'll, the, the settings on that will vary a bit depending on if it is a cooler or a freezer. Um, the freezer, um, will go into defrost until um, it hits either a 55 degree coil temperature or 35 minutes of, of actual time. Uh, the refrigerator, we're looking at 41 degree coil temperature or 75 minutes uh, on the refrigerator. 
Um, the evaporator fan motor uh, during, for a freezer during defrost, it, it will um, uh, it, it will not run during that defrost time. But then after um, the evaporator reaches a negative five degrees or two minutes of of actual time, uh, then it'll uh, it'll start working um, after that defrost. So the condensing unit kicks in. Your fan delay is that either two minutes or a negative five degree um, coil temperature. Defrost on these, we, we can have defrost just about every hour on it, depending on, on how much usage it's getting. Um, we have a minimum defrost time of two minutes for a refrigerator, six minutes for a freezer. Um, and then the, uh, so if there's a, a, a low enough coil temperature that's picked up, um, if this unit, maybe the, the display or the control is set down quite low on there, it will, it will kick it into, um, into defrost a lot more frequently there, especially if it's an area where they have a lot of door openings and things like that. As far as the time of day defrost, so this is um, something where you can actually set the defrost for, for a given time up to six defrosts in a 24 hour period. So um, so if you set it uh, for uh, for the time of day defrost, you'll go through, this is where it's really critical that the the time setting is correct on the on the unit as well on the on the display. So you want to make sure you check those time settings before you set the the time of day defrost to make sure it's actually going into defrost at the at the time that you want it to. So um, you can you can do it up to uh, the the hour and minute. So you'll notice on our on our example here. We got 3.30, 5.30, and 8.30, both a.m. and p.m. You'll see the little red green sliders there for, for a.m. or p.m. Um, and then the defrost will will follow the same rules as, as I had mentioned before as far as um, the termination on that. So the, the coil temperatures and, and run times will be the same on that. But if you want to have a defrost at uh, you know 2.18 p.m., you can set it for 2.18. I mean, it's... it's go right to the to the minute on that so um, so you just want to make sure again the time settings are are correct and then also your um, your your date settings on that as well so if you have it uh, or the I'm sorry the, the time setting for either a 12 hour or 24 hour clock uh, make sure you have that set accordingly as well um, if you have it set for 24 a 24 hour clock you won't have the a.m. p.m. on there um, you'll just have the just the regular, the military time, if you will, on that. As far as setting box temperature, so our, our example here screen, it shows a, a dual temp unit, so you can kind of just get a feel for, you know, refrigerator or freezer. Uh, this does require the password, so that 211276 password is is what you'll need for, for this one here. And then also, um, so once you get into that, you just increase the temperature or decrease it wherever you want. There's no set button or anything like that. So you'll just set it to, to whatever temperature you're, you're looking at. Um, and then you just hit the back button. Uh, you can only adjust within the, the set point limits that are set. Uh, it's preset on, the, on those. So there's no way to, to get into that and manipulate those settings any. Um, as far as the set point limits for a refrigerator, uh, we have a, a 30 to 60 degree range on that. Um, usually that, that high temperature range, if somebody's trying to store red wine or something like that, that, that requires a little bit of a higher temperature, um, that's usually a, a, a sweet spot for that. I'm, I'm not a wine drinker, but uh, um, that, that's what I've been told. So, um, and then as far as the freezer goes, uh, the, the set points on those are anywhere from negative five degrees all the way up to 36 degrees. Um, we, we have a customer that, that purchases these units and they, they use them to, to thaw meat. So um, they'll, they'll typically have it set up a little bit higher. They'll put frozen product into the freezer and, and have it um, to where they, they have it. So, it. so it slowly thaws the meat out for them. So... Um, so that's why we have such a, a high number on the uh, the freezer setting there. 
Uh, as far as alarm management goes, and this is specifically to any active alarms that are on the or active alerts that are on the uh, the screen, um, typically, like I mentioned before, and, and I'll show you here in a little bit, the the active alerts will show up in the in the top right corner, um, and then it can also be accompanied by an audible alarm. So the the default setting is is off on this because it is quite loud. It's like a uh, a loud ding, like when you get off of an elevator, but it's uh, it's quite a bit louder than that. So we actually have a speaker located behind the front shroud on this unit, so it's it, it gets pretty loud, especially if you got it in the in the office or somewhere quiet. And that thing starts going off. It, uh, it definitely gets people's attention. Um, so you can just press the little slider button there, switch it to on or off, whatever, whatever is uh, the customer's uh, preference on that. Uh, as far as network connection, this is probably something that uh, I'm most excited about on on these controls. So this control it, uh, it, it has the ability to be connected to a Wi-Fi connection uh, for the purpose of remote monitoring. So uh, we can go through, we can check different settings in that via an app. We'll talk about all that here in the next few slides. So, um, but we'll talk about how, first off, how we, how we set up the connection on there, how we, we, we connect to the, to the Wi-Fi. So, so what we'll do is we'll go to, uh, to network connection, and then there's typically, um, depending on, on where it's located at, but there should be some options for, uh, Wi-Fi there where you can where you can connect at the site so this would be at the customer's location so you would you would find the the network that you can connect to um, there, there's typically going to be about eight of them listed on there so you can find find which one you're looking for um, sign into it so what you'll do then is you'll you'll select the network you'll actually put in the the password for the network so you're not going to put in the 211276 password or or any other password, you're going to put in the the, the network password. So if you're at a, a, a pizza place and they have one of these units and you want to connect it to the Wi-Fi so you can do some monitoring of it, um, you're going to put in whatever their password is for that network. So if it's Pizza 300, you're going to put in Pizza 300, and that's going to be your, your password there for that. Once you're successfully connected, um, it'll, it'll show you then the the network that you're uh, that you're connected to along with the the signal strength on that as well so and then you'll press the back button and then you're you're ready to do remote monitoring so so these pictures on this screen show uh, what you would see on our app so you'll look at the top of the the screen here where it says specification line connect that's the name of the app that you download to be able to do remote monitoring. So, um, so it's available for both uh, iPhone and, and Android users. So, so you can go to the to the App Store or to the Play Store, whatever whatever you have, uh, depending on what type of phone you have, you can download that app. And then, what you'll do is for yourself, you'll create a profile which includes your name, your email address, uh, and then once you do that, you can start adding. Um, locations, adding units uh, to your um, to your profile, basically. So, so in this instance here, this was a unit that we had as part of a field test. Uh, we did a we did the field testing on these units so late 2017, early 2018 is about the time frame on that. So, what we have here, uh, start from the left hand side. You'll notice at the top we got some green squiggly lines. That's going to be our ambient temperature in the space where this unit's located. Uh, then you'll see the, the orange or, or yellowish lines there. That's our cycling of our condensing unit. And then the solid green or bluish line there between those those yellow ones is going to be um, the set point temperature. So that one shouldn't change a whole lot unless somebody's really going in there and, and changing a bunch of bunch of temperature settings on it then the the next uh, two there we have the condenser inlet versus outlet um, and then same thing with the evaporator 
And then our last one there on the right hand side is our energy usage. So this unit was a refrigerator. Um, so you'll notice the, the, the box temperature was set at around 36 degrees. Um, you'll notice our, our condenser inlet and outlet temperatures as you kind of follow along. Um, you'll kind of see where the where the unit went into a defrost. It shows it pretty nicely on here. You have that that spike after about four or five cycles um, where the temperature goes up. You'll notice the condenser inlet and outlet temperatures both drop down because the condensing unit shuts off during the defrost cycle. The evaporator uh, temperature starts to, to climb upward a little bit, warming up during the defrost. And then our energy usage goes down quite a bit because we only had sure probably just the light was on along with the evaporator fan motor so so it's, you can kind of follow those trend lines um, kind of nice there on on this app gives you an idea of just some some of the, of the usage on it there the different times you'll notice you see those going back to the temperature chart there where the temperatures kind of jump up a little bit obviously those are must have been a, a busy time at the at the place where this unit was located at um, but for the most part, it, it's cycling probably 38 degrees down to about 34, just running, running nice and steady on that. So I mentioned this is just for remote monitoring. Uh, we don't have the, the capability to, to do any sort of manipulation of controls. So if the customer was to call up with the same cooler here and say, hey, I'm, I'm having an issue, um, it's not getting cold enough, we go in, we check, we see, oh, the, the, the temperature setting is at 42 degrees. So you want things at 36, so we can, we can change that setting for them uh, remotely, but we don't have that option. So what we can do is we can, we can offer advice to them for sure. We can, we can look at it and say, okay, well, here's what it looks like we have going on, and then uh, determine if, you know, if service is needed or if it's just a, a simple adjustment or maybe some maintenance issues with a a dirty coil or, or something along those lines. Uh, we also have a, a website that you can view that information as well. It's set up a little bit differently on a dashboard. Uh, you can see I had created a profile for myself back, uh, well, I, I took a screenshot of this anyway back in uh, January of, of 2019. So, um, but this is um, wellbuiltdigital.com and that gives you the opportunity to to look at all of the the locations that you may have set up uh, on your on your phone or had done it on the computer here, so you'll notice mine. Uh, we had some. Uh, this was during. Uh, these were some of the ones I had set up during our, our field testing and some other locations. So, um, but just uh, ones to to take a look at here. Um, you could monitor. From, from anywhere basically on this, as long as you got a, a smartphone or a tablet or can log on to a, to a computer here. So um, just, a, just a different way of looking at things uh, uh, as opposed to, to the app. So if you have a, a desktop or a laptop computer, you can, you can log in and, and check out that information as well. Um, we actually have a, a how-to video uh, on our YouTube channel. So if you go to uh, Delfield Tech Talk, um, there is some information there on, on how to uh, how to connect or how to download the app and then uh, how to add locations on that as well. So uh, there's some some information there too. The interior light. We normally have those those always on. Now there's a, there is an option to to turn those off. The date and time settings, like I mentioned, those are are pretty critical on these, especially when it comes to setting the adaptive de or the time of day defrost, and then certain errors too. So if there's a, a kind of a pattern developing where we're getting some you know some high temperature alarms, let's say. And it's always occurring around the same time every day. Um, it's, it's much easier to, to kind of pinpoint what might be going on at that time. Maybe it's an operational issue. We can look at it and say, hey, you're, you're getting a long compressor runtime error, for instance, and we're getting that every day at around 1 o'clock. 
and we, we find out that it's a, a roll-in unit and they're leaving the, the door open to to grab product out of during during lunch rush or something like that. So just something to, to keep in mind, um, especially if you got one where maybe you've had some issues um, and it's kind of an intermittent thing. Maybe it's not doing it eight, at 8 o'clock in the morning, but at 2 o'clock in the afternoon it is. Uh, we can kind of capture that making sure we have the, the date and time settings uh, correct is, is critical there. And again, the time settings I'd mentioned earlier, we have AM and PM options, uh, the 24 hour or 12 hour as well. So just uh, again, pretty, pretty self-explanatory as far as um, setting the, the date and time on that. And then our date settings, um, again, depends on on how you have it set up. If it's set up for a 24-hour clock, it's going to actually put the day first, then the month, uh, then the year. If it's set to 12-hour, to uh, it'll actually, the, the month will be first, then the day. So, um, you know, here in the States, we're used to, you know, today's date is, is 9-8-2020. If we were in Germany, let's say, <clears throat> they would actually have the day first. So it'd be 8-9-2020. So, um, so just make sure you have that, that set to the 12 hour for, for us here, for the most part, that's what we're going to be dealing with. Um, there, there may be some, some instances depending on, on where it's at or the application, maybe the, the 24 hour clock will be uh, more beneficial for the customer. LCD brightness is something that we really shouldn't be messing around with on these here. Uh, the defaults at 50%. You can set it brighter. You can set it darker. Um, but uh, the the company that we worked with when we developed the screen had mentioned that if the the brightness was set too bright, that could actually cut down on the amount of time that that unit will or the screen will the, the useful life on that. So um, so we just want to make sure that we leave it right at 50%. Uh, the screen itself. Um, will normally last uh, uh, for, for up to about 12 years or so, usually with, with no issues there. Um, typically what happens with those, that with the screen starts to degrade, it's not gonna be something where it's just all of a sudden you come in and it's, and it's out one day. Normally what happens is it'll, it'll slowly start to fade over, over a number of years and then eventually it gets to the point where you can't see it anymore. So the brightness on that should be, should be fine at, uh, at 50 percent there manual defrost so this is something maybe you come in you see a unit it's froze up uh, you want to kick it into a manual defrost just to, to knock some of that ice off of there get things cleared up so we can do a good diagnosis on it so um, you know just simply turn put the slider if it's showing off press the button switch it to switch it to on um, and then it'll it'll go through the the defrost cycle and uh, it'll it'll function just like a, a regular defrost there. Uh, door frame heater is something that uh, is an option only on freezers. So um, we, we don't have the option on, on refrigerators. Um, so the, the frame heater is the default setting is set to power save. And what that means is the defrost heater will only energize when the compressor is running. Uh, once the compressor, once the unit satisfies and the compressor shuts off, the door frame heater de-energizes. And then the other options on here are, are always off or always on. Um, normally, I recommend setting this to, to always on, uh, especially in areas maybe in the southeast part of, of the country where it's typically warm and humid for, for a number of months throughout the year. Um, that that'll cut down on the on the frame sweating on these or or possibly causing some issues with with door gaskets or freeze ups and things like that. So so normally I recommend setting that to, to always on. Um, that there are some instances where um, the always off may work if it's a very dry environment where it's at and there's really no no issue with with high humidity or anything like that. You probably could switch to always off. But, uh, but at a minimum, I, I would definitely recommend the, the power save uh, being the, the default setting on that. 
Uh, as far as rapid pull down, though, this is something that's only a refrigerator option. And this is something where, um, so for instance, if you, the way it was explained to me um, as why it was something that the, the customer had, had requested was if they get a, a truckload of, of produce in, maybe it's a little bit warm, um, they want to they wanna get that temperature drop down a little bit quicker. And they, they switch it to rapid pull down and what it'll do, it'll change the set point of the refrigerator. So if it was set at 36, it'll change it to 30 degrees for, for one hour. And then after that hour is up, it'll switch back to its normal set point. And maybe they decide after 45 minutes that they, they don't need it to, to be set quite that low. They go back into rapid pull down, they turn it off it'll it'll switch back to its normal set point there. So this is just an option on a refrigerator. This isn't available on the freezer. Uh, diagnostics, probably the stuff you guys are most interested in. So I saved the, the good stuff towards the end here. Um, so you can go into the diagnostic screen. You can look at the relay status and data history and temperature probes and, and model info and relay outputs, you can check all that stuff from the diagnostic screen. So if you look at the relay status here, so you look at our freezer and, uh, and then the, you'll notice the different relays that we have there as far as the compressor, and the, the condenser and evaporator fans, the frame heater, the defrost heater, the interior light. Uh, with the refrigerator, we don't have the, the frame heater or the defrost heater on that, so we'll have a, a couple less options on those. But if the if the unit was was running and we just wanted to take a look at these relays here, we we'd find that the uh, compressor is on and the condenser fan motor is on, evaporator fan motor is on, frame heater is on, heater should be off, lights are probably on depending on on where it's set at. So um, just something to uh, a nice visual there to to see what the unit's doing. As far as the relay output screen, so this is a screen where you actually have the ability to go in and activate a, an individual relay for five seconds. So you can go in, turn your compressor on, maybe get an amp draw off of it, check the condenser fan motor as well, or the evaporator fan motor. So you can go in there and check those things. They'll run for five seconds. Uh, the little icon on the right-hand side will turn green and just say that it's on. And then after that, it'll it'll switch the the relay off there. So, um, so this is just something to, um, you know, maybe you, you haven't seen your evap evaporator fan motor run. You just want to make sure that there there isn't an issue with it. Um, you, you verified that the coil's not froze up, so you can go in there, activate that icon, or activate the relay rather. See the icon show that it's on. Then you can check your fan. You're like, oh, yep, the fan actually does work. Okay and then you can kind of go from there. So as far as the, the probe readings, so these are the different probes that we have on there as far as the box temp, inlet and outlet of both the evaporator and uh, condenser coil, ambient temperature, um, and then relative humidity, you see it listed here at 36%. The, we, we do not have a probe installed on the refrigerators or freezers for the relative humidity. Um, so that will always read 0%. There is an option to add it, but we don't have it as a standard feature there. So if somebody, you know, if a customer notices that, hey, that thing's reading 0% all the time, if they want to add it, they certainly can. Um, it isn't anything that will cover under warranty, um, but uh, but they can add the the humidity sensor to these if they so choose. Uh, as far as uh, data history goes on these, so you can go through, you can download uh, diagnostics, you can download the HACCP information. So that's why um, these are uh, really popular, these units are with schools, because in the past, um, I don't know if any of you have worked in a, in a school before, but a lot of them had a, a clipboard kind of tied to a cooler, and they were writing down temperatures every half hour, or every hour, whatever they were doing. Um, this way here, they can just download that, that information and have it have it saved uh, on a flash drive. So, and then there's there's charts for the for energy usage and the, the temperatures over a, a seven day period as well. Um, we'll look at some of those here uh, in a bit. Uh, as far as the the energy chart, so it's nothing spectacular by any means, but it just gives the 
the, the energy usage um, for the last seven days. So you can look back and just see where where maybe they, they've been running the unit a little bit harder certain days or not. Um, temperatures here, that just kind of shows some of the average over the last seven days as well, as far as box temp goes. As far as downloading the diagnostics, um, pretty simple on here. You go into download diagnostics, uh, it'll, it'll prompt you to insert a, a USB. Uh, you'll put in a USB on there. You'll, uh, the start button will appear after a few seconds. You press start and then it'll download the information to your flash drive. This typically takes about five seconds. It's pretty quick, so there isn't uh, a whole lot of time there uh, doing that. And then you can go to a, to a laptop or a desktop computer and um, you can take a look at that data over the last uh, few days. It'll give you different probe readings, temperature readings, and uh, just see, uh, see what it's doing or not doing for you there. Uh, as far as the model information screen, so on this screen here, you can go through and check the, uh, the model type, uh, should give the serial number information, and then your different firmware versions on there. There's three different types of uh, firmware versions on these. So we have the, the, the SUI, the CCB, and the KCCM. Um, the, the, the ones showing on here right now are, are some older versions of the, the firmware, but the MAC addresses are there for um, our IT people to communicate with the site's IT people to get this thing hooked up to the, um, to the Wi-Fi on that. We run into issues, especially in like hospitals or some areas where they have issues with, with network security, where it's really tight. That hospital really comes to mind. It seems like we, we've dealt with this a time or two. Uh, as far as the firmware update, um, so it's kind of the same thing with the USB. You want to make sure the USB that you use has, has absolutely no, no other items on it other than that the firmware itself. Uh, the firmware is available on our website. So if you go to delfield.com and you go to service and then service parts, and then you'll find uh, under downloads, you'll scroll down and find the, uh, the screen that has where you, can, where you can download the firmware onto a USB. But it's the same thing as the downloading of the diagnostics. You, you put in the flash drive, the start button appears, you press start. Uh, in this case here, the, the firmware update typically takes about 10 minutes or so. And then it will it'll tell you on the screen when you can um, when you can remove the USB. It'll because it'll restart the unit and then it'll pop up the screen. It'll say firmware update complete. Uh, remove USB from from the uh, from the drive there. So um, but, so there isn't any way uh, as of right now to to do any firmware updates remotely. Again, we, we had talked earlier about um, there being access um, uh, network security type issues there so as far as um, we can we can monitor but we can't change any of the settings and that's the same thing as far as uh, the firmware goes as well as far as the firmware verification screen so we can go through um, this is where you can enter model and serial number information entering the serial number is very critical as well especially if there's any remote monitoring that, uh, that needs to occur. Um, we want to make sure that that serial number is entered correctly on the unit, uh, because if you put in the serial number on your, uh, on your app or on the, the, the well-built digital website, and it's different from what's on the unit, you won't be able to monitor that unit. So you want to make sure that, that it's set up correctly there. Um, there is a different password to, to get into that. Um, it's a 10 digit number there. You'll want to write that one down as well. It's 9014766419. Um, and that's the only time that you would use this password here. The 211276 password is going to work um, everywhere else. So, um, so just uh, again, I'll give you a minute there to, to write that down so you can. Um, 
So you can get that one at 901476-6419. That's that's the only time you'll use that is when you're when you're doing a, a verification of the of the firmware. Uh, as far as resetting factory settings, so this is one I actually took a call from a guy in British Columbia just a few minutes before I, we began this training, and uh, we had we had to do that to uh, to their unit um, because there was a whole bunch of things that got changed. But uh, you can go through the two one one two seven six password will always work. So if you have to um, if the passwords got changed for some reason, you can enter that password. It will always work and then you can you can reset things uh, alarm history on this so there's a you'll see on the right hand side there's a whole whole slew of different alarms uh, you'll notice on our screen here on the top right of the of the, the, the touch screen uh, that's showing on the on your page right here uh, you'll see there's an exclamation point with a triangle that's an active alert so you can you press that and then it'll show you the different types of alarms on here and you'll see there's four different ones showing on the screen it, it'll hold up to 20 of them so you can scroll down there's a scroll bar there on the right hand side and go through the different messages um, if you press the little gray boxes on the left hand side you can delete all of those um, but when you press on them and if you take a look at these pay attention to you'll notice high temp alarm box probe out of range condenser outlet temperature uh, low voltage alarm on the next page here, you'll see the different um, the diff what will show up when you press on one of those. So you see high temperature alarm, box above acceptable temperatures in excess of 60 minutes, kicks off an alarm. Box probe error, refrigerator operating in safe mode. Uh, these units have a uh, these controls rather have a, a safe mode. So if the air probes uh, fails. It'll cycle the unit or the condensing unit on and off. Uh, it's like eight minutes on, four minutes off until we can get that corrected. Uh, condenser temperature alarm. Uh, I like this one because it shows, you know, condenser temperature too high, possible block coil. Refer to owner's manual uh, to clean it or call our number. Um, that one's nice because it puts a little bit of the ownership of the issue on the on the customer. Uh, they may not know where their manual's at, but the phone number's right there. They can give me or, or any of the other people here at Tech Support a call, and we can walk them through how to how to clean the condenser coil. Uh, and then low voltage alarm. You'll notice it says here compressor did not start on on shutdown due to the voltage being too low. Um, there is a a low voltage threshold. It's 95 um, volts. Uh, up to 145 is that range it'll it'll work but if it gets above 145 it'll actually kick off a high voltage alarm so just uh, something to, to be aware of there as well it holds out the condensing unit until that voltage issue is corrected so that was all I had today um, I just wanted to, to thank you all for for coming out today and, and uh, listening to our, our GA control training here um, if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them as best I can. Uh, I have a question. What's the password to change the temperature? Uh, the password is going to be 211276, and that'll get you into that function to change the temperature and, and any of the other password protected functions. That password will still apply. Okay. Um, I have a question. <clears throat> Where can I find instructions on how to load the firmware onto a flash drive and then load the firmware onto the unit? You can go to our uh, YouTube channel to find information on how to download the firmware and then how to load the firmware onto the unit. Uh, you can also go to our website, uh, delfield.com, and you can go to the service portion of that and find information on how to download the firmware and the firmware is actually available on our website how do i go about checking the probe readings when i'm working on a unit so you can go into diagnostics uh, and then in diagnostics there's going to be a a selection for uh, checking the probe uh, the temperatures on that the probe readings uh, once you go there, you'll see the different readings as far as box temperature, inlet and outlet of the 
uh, evaporator and condenser coils, ambient temperature, and if the customer has the humidity sensor, because uh, that is an option, uh, it's not a standard one, uh, you, can, you can check the humidity in the area where the unit's located as well.